Hello and welcome back to the Spider's Web. And uh, we're going to be continuing with our series of repainting the Curse of Undeath faction pack by doing the uh, Warrior Skeletons. And a quick update on the um, project I'm doing with the three. 3D tiles for Castle Ravenloft are finished. Thank God for that. It was really getting on my nerves, but I've eventually finished, or at least I think I have. Haven't counted up all the tiles yet, but I'm sure I've actually finished. So, that being said, uh, plan for, or the pl next plan is to do a video. Uh, the gameplay using extra bits and pieces, extra cards, possibly some of these figures. Um, for Castle Ravenloft using the new tiles. So, um, all being well, that should be up and running fairly soon. I just want to get these finished painted first. Um, so, I'll be getting cracking on these. Okay, so, let's carry on. Let's have a look at our figure, shall we? Well, if you remember from the last time we touched these, I did the the actual skeleton part of it. It's just the armour, the shield, and the axe that needs doing. So, uh, without further gas bagging, let's get on with it. So, what do we do first? Well, as most of it is metallic, you should know by now what I do. You get the tin bits out and give everything this metal a good going over with tin bits. And that's around the edge of the shield. It's the armour, it's the axe. And I'm hoping this light is okay. Um, I'm sure I mentioned it in a, another video that uh, had a bit of an accident with my previous lights where Aladdin knocked it off the table when he heard somebody outside went running to the window and uh, knocked everything off the table so basically it broke the light um, so I had to go out and buy a new one so I'm hoping it works okay but we'll soon find out when I get to see the video back. Um, so like I say, it's just a case of anything that's metal, we paint over with the tin bits. Okay, so that's the skeleton. 
all base coated, base coated, cone, coated, coated, what does coated mean? So let's do the other one and then we can come back. Um, once I've done this I'm going to give it a couple of minutes and I just want to get one of the pieces out to show you what I've done. Um, I'm quite proud of it, it's the, um, the dark fountain tile. Um, incredibly pleased with that one. Because I wasn't sure how I was going to go about doing it, but so I just made just had a silly idea, ran with it, and for me it seems to work. Um, so I hope when you see it, you'll agree with me. But I quite like it. I mean, obviously, I could have done. I could have probably done it in a better way. Um, but it's all just a prototype, it's just me learning of how to how to uh, how to make things. Well not how to make things, how to make the, these actual tiles. If if I do one for um Wrath of a Shadow on uh, and the Legend of Drist, I will be making the wall sections different. Um, because at the moment it's just like one one piece. What I really should have done was box it out completely like I did with the small square sections. Um, it was actually raised in the comments section in the last video I posted, the last update from it that I posted. Um, that the walls were too narrow. I agree the walls are too narrow but after, you've done, after I've done so many um, And, um, oh, what was I saying? After I'd done so many and covered it in the pumice, the white pumice, it was it's going to be a big job to try and remove all the pumice so I can actually, well, not remove all the pumice, but remove any of the pumice that's going to be in my way um, and rebox it out. So that's not going to be. Um, That's not going to be a feature of the of this particular tile series, but as I say, if I do Wrath of a Shadow on and Legend of Dress, then I will be doing more chunkier wall sections. It just make it will just make it look a bit better, a bit more natural than having sort of like a. A narrower wall, like the, that's the way I mean. And there's a few, a couple of areas here that I really need to go over again with the wash. So, I think what I'll do is I'll, I'll say I'll wait until I finish painting, then I'll go over the skeleton again in white for the areas that I've missed, and then. Um, we don't want to wash over again in the Agrax Earthshed. Okay, so that's all the skeletons done. I'm going to pause the camera for a second while I go and get this particular tile piece. I will be back with you very shortly. Okay, I'm back. So I'll just move those out of the way and I'll show you the back of the well, this is what I'm talking about. Um, I've done it so that it's like a hollowed out wall. What I should have done was put a back on this and then put like a top on it just so that it's all disguised. It looks like a very strong wall and um, it's not open when it's, uh, when it's placed down within game um, it'll it'll look much better. Anyway, as I say, marked it off as a dark fountain. Um, I should have picked the original tile up but I didn't. But basically what it is it's a fountain. Um, I've just a little block uh, 
cut out a semicircle of the foam core. Took off the. Have I got any foam core lying around that I can show you? Ah. This isn't the actual piece, this is just what I was messing about with, uh, seeing how I can do it. Um, so I, I cut the cut the foam core to the size I needed which was just like one inch, one inch by two inch and cut a semicircle in it, gouged out on the foam and the top layer of paper, left the bottom layer on, glued that to a piece of curd which again is the one inch by two, rounded off the corners um, and then obviously covered it with the pumice. Then this part here is quite simply another piece of this that was just covered, co uh, going again, uh, which is just basically two, two pieces glued back to back and I just cut out some random shape. Um, trimmed it down with the knife so that it looks fountainish, and then with the glue gun I filled in um, the gap in the this, this layer of foam core where I gouged it out in the bottom so that was filmed in with the glue gun then it was painted and then once I'd finished texturing all the back and painting it all up I took the glue gun again and basically went down touched it to the went down to the actual part where it's supposed to be water and kept doing that in various parts so it looks as though there's hopefully looks as though there's water actually trickling down so I'm quite impressed with that I'm quite happy with the way it's come out um, again we've got the blood splatter there as the spawn point um, so I say, I'm, I'm pleased with the way that's turned out. So that's that over and done with. Okay, so let's get on with this um, rune fang steel, and I'm going to do it on the um, oh, what do you call it? On the chain mill first of all, because that's the bit that's going to. Um, be the messy part, shall we say. Okay, if you can hear that crunching noise, laddie's having a chomp on a bone. Yeah, one of the neighbours was annoying me, so I cut his leg off. And uh, <laughs> Now, um, I'll get, uh, get these big Jurassic bones from the range. So he's having a, he's having a good chomp on one of them. Okay, so that's the front done. And now we'll get the back done. There we are. And I'm going to do the blade of the axe as well. completed with the chain mill and next we have the second one so I'm just going to go over the head of the axe first of all take most of the paint off the brush and then go over the chain mail area of his armour um, strangely enough the back of these models are actually more detailed than the front of the models. So the chain mail is actually showing up as chain mail on the back and it's not doing it on the front. But never mind. It's just a case of there we are. Okay, 
so that's two of them done.